Hey, hello everyone, it's Mike1211 here, back with another Simutron's how-to tutorial thingy-mabob. Today we're going to be looking at some, uh, I guess you could call them advanced signals, some advanced signal properties, etc, etc. So last time we went over basic signals and choose signals, and that's all good and fine, that will keep your trains running. But... If you're wanting a bit more, then look no further than this tutorial. So, uh, as you can see here, I've already set up a dual track. It's very long. And the stations don't end at the end of it. They come off of it. You might be saying, well, that's a bit strange. Why would you want to do that? Well, if you've watched my series, then the reason you would want to do this is because um, you want to continue this dual track and just have all your trains use it and instead you want them to branch off into their different stations so that's what this is for now I meant to have some trains going forgot to do that but I can get them going quite fast and really this isn't gonna be one where I can show you very much but mostly just explain <clears throat> oh, sorry about that so um, as you can see here, I have some other strange ones which don't have dual track going to them, and you might be like, wow, now, that doesn't seem like a good idea. In fact, this one, I just have this way, and I forgot choose signal has to be two-way. So, wait a minute, that's a new choose signal. Let's just make sure we have this right, shall we? Okay, it's the same, it's just weird. So, anyways, these don't have enough stations and they're definitely not long enough for me to even worry about trains coming and going. I could care less. They can come and go whenever they want. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, if you have this few of stations, and obviously you'd only have like one or two trains servicing that, you wouldn't want more, um, then it's fine to actually have them share the track and choose stations. Uh, same thing. I did the same thing up here. Let me make that a duel again. Um, only this time... I have a dual choose signal right here, uh, not choose, a dual signal right here that will help them go up and down. And then down here, I, uh, I have a two-way track because look at all these stations. Oh, you can get a ton of trains in there. So you definitely want flow on that one. Um, so now into the more interesting, shall we say, signals. Um, could get a few trains going. Yeah, whatever. It would make things a bit more interesting, but not any better to explain this time. Because advanced signals are just that, advanced. There's very few times you have to use them. Now, there is one thing that I want to say. When you have an intersection like this, it's good to put a signal here. The reason for that is because you don't want your trains that are going this way to stop your trains that are going this way at intersections. You only want trains that are crossing over to stop both lanes of uh, train traffic. So let me just go ahead put two-way signals here. You don't want them one direction because you want trains to be able going this way to be able to come in here and trains going this way to either be able to turn around or go in here. Um, usually they won't have to turn around because they should be able to come out of their station and be like, oh, I'll just come here and go the way that I want to. So that's important. So you'll very rarely have trains turn around, but if they need to, then they can. Um, yeah, basically this allows trains from either direction to get into the station, and trains from the station to start going either direction. Pretty obvious, I think, why that would be important. So, there arises a situation sometimes with these intersections, where you want, if there are uh, two trains waiting here for this one, to get priority, let's say. Well, that's where one of the places where pre-signals can come in. And I'll explain these a bit. Oh, I've got so many signals here. Okay, leave this guy with a normal signal. And give these guys pre-signals. So let me just create some pre-signals. Is that as important? I don't even know. I 
think that's correct. So, basically with pre-signals, what happens is that when a train gets to this signal, it will then check these two blocks to see if they're open. If they're not open, the train waits here. And uh, how this gives priority is this one only has to check if this block is open, right here. And if it is, then it gets to go. And so this train is stuck waiting at this signal. Pretty nifty. And you have to have three every single time. Because uh, it always checks two ahead. And you can put them in more order. And that will actually space out your trains by two signals. Uh, if you put them all the way around. So that can be interesting. So like one here. And then once this train leaves here, then this one gets to go. Uh, they're pretty nice to use. And obviously you would want to do it for this side too. Right here at this intersection. But yeah. So, to give you an, more of an idea of what happens here, when a train gets here, it checks this space of track up to this signal, and then it checks this space of track as well up to this signal. And only if both of them are open does it get to go. Now, obviously, you don't want to use that here. That's just silly, but yeah. Um, there's also the gate. What this does is... If you're playing multiplayer, it doesn't let other players come through your gate and onto your track. So, you know, that's helpful. Uh, there's the do not use track. It doesn't allow trains to go in this direction. Um, I think you can change that, yeah. Uh, this can be used with a long block signal to do some fancy stuff. I don't know. I'm going to put a link down in the description where I found all this information. Because some of it is even too advanced for me. And if you want to get all fancy, you can. Uh, I'm just going to try to give you the stuff like this. This is pretty important. I didn't know about it originally, but I was like, oh yeah, I can see where that could be useful sometimes. Uh, there's the platform choose exclude signal. You put this on the track and it excludes the track from the platform choice. It doesn't exclude the platform, just the track leading up to it. It's kind of weird like that. So if the train can get to the track another way, it will. Yeah. Um, which means that could have actually fixed my problem that I was having last time where the train was coming around and back up. If I excluded it from platform choice on that side, the train can't come up. It has to go through. Although I don't know if that would have fixed the problem, but it should have. Okay, I think that's almost it. The only last thing to tell you about is the long block signals. Um, so yeah, there's your exclude from platform choice. It's kind of like got a white bell on it, at least in this pack set. Again, this should be about the same for all pack sets. Uh, they might look different, but they will all behave the same way. So, the long block signal. Now, I didn't get this one for quite a long time, and I can finally see why it would be useful, but... Oh, I'm sorry about that. But uh, it's a little bit hard to understand. So let's say I have two stations on a bottleneck track. It needs to be bottleneck because if there's this, it doesn't matter anymore. Trains are allowed to go both directions. And I could almost show this one, but um, yeah. Let me raise this up. Okay. And then on either side, you know, you're going back to your dual track. Okay, let's just say... Going back to your dual track. You have trains coming in. I don't know why you would do it this way, but you can. And that's why I'm showing you how, if you were ended up in this situation, how you could do it. Okay, so now this is a block. Trains coming here won't go in there simple. Um, now what the long block signal does, let me go ahead and grab it again. Grab the long block. Ah, and you know what? This would actually be a problem. Okay, hold on. So if you're doing a dual track, I know, I know, it seems crazy. Your long block signals have to be right here. 
the reason for that is you want this whole thing to be a block because you don't want a train well leaving leaving would be okay but yeah you definitely want yeah you want it this way okay yeah because all signals have to be long block well this one this one I think could be normal I don't know I might have to put some trains on here to experiment Just so I can put trains on later if I need to, I'm going to make little track loops. Okay. So, basically, what happens here is stations are considered start of blocks. And so, let me get another long block signal. There we go. And I'm pretty sure I can have this one for exiting. So that way, if a train's going this way the train coming in will wait here before entering the track and we don't have a bottleneck situation so what long block signals do normal a normal signal will um, check up to the station that it needs to get to and if the station that it needs to get to is open well then that's all fine and dandy it'll go ahead and go uh, same thing on this side now what could be the problem is you have a train enter this side and come in here and then you have a train enter this side and come to this station. And now they're facing each other. And let's say they both need to get to opposite sides. Well, Houston, we have a problem. Because both of these trains will be in deadlock with each other. What the long block signal does is instead of checking up to the station, it checks the entire track. Even if there's a station in between. It doesn't care about the stations. It ignores them. And so it checks the entire track... And that's it. Um, and so, a train will come here, here, and here and do all its stuff. Let me build some trains to actually make sure that my theory is correct on this one. But I think it should be. Um, just to show ya. So I want it to go here, I want it to go here, here, and here. Let me just make sure that that did it all, okay. And I'll copy it like 10 times, they should all be able to go. Uh, there might be too many here. But as you can see... Oh, I need more signals. <laughs> Same thing over here. This needs more signals. As you can see, it is working how I said it would be. Um, the trains are waiting for this entire track. Oh, I replaced it. No, stop. Oh boy. I accidentally replaced a thing. I accidentally replaced my long block signal, and that was bad. Because now this guy. You know what? I don't need this many trains out here. Retire. <laughs> and as you can see, as they're stopping at that station. These guys have to wait. Same for the other direction. Uh, and as you saw, <laughs> with the other way, a train will just go. And it's a real problem um, when you don't have this long block signal. So, anyways, there's why you would use the long block signal. Um, and yeah, I think that'll wrap up this tutorial. So, let me just make sure that I'm not missing anything on the signals front. I think that's it. I'll go ahead and put the link to where I found all this information in the description. That way you can look it up yourself for uh, reference if you want to try to figure out the fancier things you can do. Yeah, he is stuck. There's too many trains. I obviously have way too many trains for this tiny track. There we go. 
And you should probably use these just if you have a station on a single track like this and you're going to have multiple trains using it. Do the same thing as this. Just just to make sure it all works okay. But uh, this is definitely what it needs to be used for if you have something like this weird. Because otherwise they'll get stuck. Yeah. So anyways, that wraps up this tutorial. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed and I hope this did help. Um, you understand more complex things that signals can do. And, uh, if you did enjoy it, leave a like or subscribe, because it helps me know you enjoyed the video, and I will continue to make more. And until next time, I will see you all later. Bye-bye!